Hi guys, it's Martin Gold Cummings from MGC Productions, and today we will be interviewing Tony nominee Lou Libertor. He was nominated in 1988 for Burn This, the Broadway show featuring John Malkovich, and we're going to talk to Lou today a little bit about what it was like to uh, be an out actor in the 1980s and what his career has been like since being Tony nominated at, I think it was 26? Or so, you're aging or me. So, Thank you very yeah, much okay. for I'm, outing me. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> my, my, my ageism in, uh, is now outed in the oh, world. Oh, Thank oh. you very much. I, I read not... it in an article. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what was it like? Uh, you, so you did a Broadway show before Burn This. Yes. When you were in your 20s. Yes. Uh, in the 80s. So what was that like to to uh, be in New York City uh, at that time? Were you out as well, an actor? Or? Um, yes, I, I, I've, always, I've always been out. There's nothing I, um, I was ever in the closet about. Uh, professionally, certainly. Um, the only time I think I was closeted was certainly with my family and okay. you know, raised Catholic Italian in northern New Jersey. People are going to be a little slow on the uptake yeah. about that. Uh, but all through college, you wanna, I sort of knew, I sort of came out to myself, I thought, as well as when I was uh, in grammar school, I sort of knew something was different. Um, and during high school, um, I sort of, you know what, this is, you know, I, I like men. Uh, but I didn't really do anything about it. I wasn't sexually active, and so okay. it wasn't anything that was sort of um, burning inside of me or was a problem, or I acted upon you. Know, it was just sort of there. So I had brown, that was known. I had, yeah, I had, I had brown hair. I was gay. I was on the wrestling team. And it was just like, it was like no big thing to me at the moment. And I think that that sort of, that attitude has always sort of carried me forward. Okay. Because I never thought m much about it, like it was a problem, or like it was something to be hidden, or oh my god. And I, I knew it was sensitive to my family, mm -hmm. but that's only that's the only time I felt it was sensitive. I, I never felt... Um, but career-wise, you always felt that you could be yourself, right. and, and I didn't feel it, I, express it. Right. I, I didn't feel I had to uh, hide anything. Uh, and people assumed what they assumed, I had no control all over that, and you know, whether I was discriminated against, I don't know whether I got a job or didn't get a job because of it. Yeah. I had no idea. But what was interesting was that, and I, I can say this now just in retrospect because uh, I certainly wasn't that self-aware when I was doing the show, but um, my first sort of big break was uh, As Is. Which was your Broadway debut. Correct. Okay. And it was written by William Hoffman, and it was the first play about AIDS that went to Broadway. Uh, Normal Heart was being done at the exact same time but that made that was off Broadway. Okay. And while we both opened off Broadway uh, around the same time, we actually transferred to Broadway. So was that um, was that impact? Um, did that get a lot of media coverage? Or amazing amount of coverage because we were writing a play basically during warfare, during the AIDS crisis, and okay. even it was even started before AIDS had a name. It was like grid gay related. Immune deficiency. Oh and wow! So they named it. So uh, so um, there was a lot going on. So much so that we had a during rehearsals we'd come in rehearsal one day and be like, you know what, we got to cut that because medically that doesn't work anymore. That's oh, already wow. outdated. They because were they were finding things new drugs. Had to be changed constantly. Things that have been changed constantly. So if you do the play now, it's an amazing uh, um, period piece. But w when I was doing the play, it, it was amazing to be a part of. We were we were commenting immediately on what was happening in the world okay. with AIDS and HIV um, and uh, the, the, the hysteria, the people's um, just reactions to it, the positive and the negative, mostly negative. What was the audience, when the audience came to see the show, what was, because a lot of Broadway shows get a, a lot of tourists and things like that, people that might not it was, it, directly I, 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 will, I will say it was a tough sell, you know, okay. though we had a lot of comedy, it was a lot of comedy. And, okay. uh, um, so you put a humor to... Yes, and the, thankfully there was you know, a lot of it because of me. Thank you oh, very much. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill, Bill was very kind. He wrote eight roles uh, that, I, that I portrayed in the, in the ensemble. Okay. It was a 90-minute show, no intermission, and oh, I was wow. just running from role to role to role, scene to scene to scene. And a variety of roles, and gay and straight, and, and, and I was even played a Puerto Rican uh, <laughs> you know, guy in the hospital. Um, but there was a lot of humor in the show, and I think that's what sold. And also, our show was a love story. It wasn't a show about. It wasn't a play about AIDS. It wasn't a play about AIDS. It, it was a play about a love story. That one of the one of the, the couple was happened to be gay, and one of them had AIDS. Okay. And so that's that's sort of how we sold it was as a love story, and I think that's where it stands. How that's it stands. Great. It was amazing. So, sort of fast forward to burn this. Um, playing a gay role again in that, it was, again, a confluence of the timing, the, write, the writing, the, the directing, my, where I was in my career in my, and my age. Uh, it was just a, a, a role that I know I was born to play. 
was at, I was a part of the Circle Repertory Company at that point. That's where I started as an intern, yeah. working you know, $50 a week, uh, <laughs> shoveling snow off the top of the theater, things like oh that, my gosh. running for coffee. And every Friday, the show, every, everything would stop. We, we'd, we'd close down the, the uh, offices and all the rehearsals and everything would stop, and we'd read a new play every Friday from 3 to 5. Oh, my gosh. And this one Friday was Lanford's Burn This. And um, my role was never read prior to this reading. It was the role of Larry? Larry. That was the character. Right. Larry was the roommate. And uh, um, the show was written for um, Nancy Snyder, who was a company member, okay. the role of Anna, which was subsequently played by uh, Joan Allen. Mm -hmm. And she won the Tony Award for that. Oh, right? And um, uh, Jeff Daniels was written for Jeff Daniels, and she didn't do it. Jonathan Hogan played the boyfriend. And uh, Bert Burton and um, John Malkovich came in to do uh, Pale. And uh, when I did the reading on that, that Friday afternoon, it was the first time that an actor had actually read the role. Prior to that, Lanford, no, Lanford Wilson, the author, had um, done workshops, mm -hmm. but mostly just readings in little um, writers' getaways. But other writers would read that role. So an actor had never never actually read it. Before. So I was, you know, I had the script and say, "Hello, we read this," because we just kind of so you can completely that originated the role. Like you were the right. first, and and right. and when I finished the reading, I told Marshall, Marshall Mason, uh, the company, uh, the, the creator of Circle Rep and the uh, subsequent director of the play, I said, "Well, you're not getting this back. This is mine. This is mine." He was like, "All right," and that's it how it was. Clicked. And you that's knew. how it was. You knew. And then we went into workshops, and it was a whole two about a two year process with combining first rehearsal to workshops to where we premiered at the Mark Taper Forum to doing it at Steppenwolf in Chicago. And then we did a couple of weeks at um, Michael Bennett's Theater, Theater 890, okay. for about two and a half weeks, and then Broadway. And then John and I took it to London. And I read in an article that um, you originally weren't going to go to London, and John Malkovich. Yeah, John's amazing. John is to go. One, not only, I think, one of the best actors, um, he's one of the really, really nicest guys I ever met. It's funny. I, I read that in an article recently, and I thought that was very interesting. That, yeah, that because of a, because of his international status, he could act anywhere. But mm -hmm. because of uh, equity rules, if you do a, a role in London that a British actor could do, you're basically taking a job away from them. So there's a swap so situation you, that happens. Okay. But originally, they wanted the original cast. That, that's what they wanted all four of us to go. But uh, Joan didn't want to re recreate it. Didn't want to go because it's, it's a rough, rough, rough role for a woman. And um, so they said, okay, two act, two American, two English. And John was part of it. He was definitely going. He goes, well, I'm not because of the name. So right, he, got to he go. was certainly right, and it would help. You know, his, his certainly in his at time in his, his career it was it was perfect for him to do yeah. that. And certainly go to London, and um, well, he said, well, I'm not going unless Lou goes. Oh my gosh! And I was like, oh, thank you, buddy. Uh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>